All right. Miranda, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see this okay? Great. Okay, so uh, last week we talked about some simple tools on social media to communicate with your supporters. And this week we're gonna talk about some easy to design graphics that will help supplement the content that you're sharing um, electronically. So that's both in your e-blasts or on social media. And you can also carry this beyond your virtual marketing to use it in brochures, um, newsletters, any print communication you use too. So um, I'll get started. If Erica, you pay, yeah, I'm sorry. Do, can you expand um, to put it in like a slideshow mode? Oh, we're, sure. We're seeing the um, text kind of small. Okay. I thought it was just going to be the first slide. Give me one second so I can share a different screen. Is that better? Mm, hold on. It has not changed. There we go. Perfect. Oh, great. Okay. So um, if you pair a relevant image with information, the retention rate goes up from 10% to 65%. There are a lot of statistics out there that will tell you that putting visuals with your communication helps um, people better take direction. So if you're asking them to go to your website or make a donation or um, attend an event that you have coming up, putting uh, a visual along with that direction helps increase that, uh, that take action rate a lot more. So um, we just wanted to share some simple, a simple tool that we use to create our graphics. So the advantages of using visuals with your communication, one that I shared, it helps people retain information more. It helps you deliver information more quickly. So something that might take several sentences for you to describe in a paragraph, you could probably share that message with one photo. It helps you more broadly convey your message so a photo can um, share across cultural boundaries, across language boundaries. It helps add context to the message that you're putting out. So it has just a broader reach than text alone can give. It's attention grabbing and engaging. I'm sure we've all been scrolling through our social media or scrolling through our emails and you find a photo that really grabs your attention and, and helps you digest the content more. It can stir and spark emotions. There's a lot of research out there that shows that a photo that focuses on a person's eyes is what draws uh, people in. It increases their donation rate as well. Um, or a photo that focuses on one or two people has a bigger impact and will attract more engagement than a photo that focuses on a large crowd. So some of those photos that really stir emotion and spark a response. And it can increase your message's credibility. If you say, you know, we had such a great event, there were 300 people that showed up, it's okay to put that into text, but if you have a photo of a full room and people mingling uh, or another visual to accompany that, it helps just add that credibility to what you're saying. So an example, you could do something like this. And this was a, a promotion for the census that we did. You have 10 minutes to fill it out. You can complete it online by phone or via mail. And here's where you can learn more information. So this text, it gives you all of the information that you need, but it's also kind of boring. Or you could do this. Miranda put this graphic together. Uh, using the tool that I'm going to talk about later. So it has, you know, the icons for your laptop denoting that you can complete it online. It has your phone, it has the mailbox. So those little icons, someone could quickly glance at that and say, okay, I can do this on my computer, on my phone, I can send it in in the mail. Do you have 10 minutes, right? You got that time clock there that says it's a short period of time. It's just gonna take up a small portion of your day. And then having the logos, on there that instead of saying, this is an initiative of Legacy Foundation and we count Lake County, those logos let you know. This is sponsored by Legacy. It's part of the We Count Lake County initiative. 
So what I'm going to talk about is Canva for nonprofits. So I'm going to go through some of the steps in the slides about how you can set it up and um, and some ways to add your brand colors, create folders and organize. And then I'm going to jump over to Canva and hopefully this works fine because I haven't tested it yet, but um, to do a live demonstration of just easily creating graphics and how you can create something really um, pretty effective in, in 10 minutes or less. Canva has a great uh, tool for nonprofits. It's free. You can sign up and add uh, 10 members of your team to the Canva Pro Access for Nonprofits. Um, you just have to be an eligible organization. So 501c3 tax exemption. Uh, I don't believe that K through 12 or colleges or universities are eligible unless you're a charter school. Churches are eligible if you have a 501c3 status or you're under that group. Um, and so here is a great tool. We are not getting paid to promote this, I should say. I feel like this is a big ad for Canva. It's just something that we use and really saves us a lot of time. So this is like not an ad. There's a free version. You don't have to buy anything. Um, and so what I'm going to show you is actually the free version so that if you want to go and apply for the Canva Pro and that takes some time, but you want to get started using it today or tomorrow, you can go into the free version and see everything that you can access here. So getting set up, you'll have to create a login like you do for all of your sites, but it's, it is such a hub for all of the graphics that you create. So you can see that you can invite your team members for free. So there may be a limit on how many team members you can invite in the free access, but all you have to do is type in their email address and invite them to um, see all of the content that you're creating. The brand logos that you see um, at the top, those you cannot add in the free version workaround. You can just go into the upload photos upload your logo and add that to any content that you're developing. Your brand colors. So these are legacy standard brand colors, at least three of them. You can upload three of the colors in the free version. Another workaround. All you have to do if you want to add a fourth color that's in your brand palette to your design work, you can just add it manually by entering in that, um, that web code or the RGB code. You can't do brand fonts in the free version, but you can find fonts. If you have um, a font that's listed in Canva, you can just add that to your design or you can find something that's close. For legacy, our fonts that are in our brand standards are not in Canva, but we use, um, I use Gaudi, which is very close to our main, and then Roboto, which is close to our um, paragraph font. And then there are these folders so you can organize and you can develop up to two folders in the free version. So if you, um, let's say the most that you do is graphics for social media, you might wanna have that folder. And then if you use um, it for invitations or flyers, whatever you use it the most for is what you're gonna wanna create a folder for because it can get overwhelming. There's a lot of um, templates in there. There are a lot of different things you can design and things can get kind of lost in uh, the full suite of things. So I'm going to talk about designing a Facebook post and that's what we'll kind of stick to in this presentation. So last week we talked about social media strategies and graphics that uh, can help supplement your content. So I think this will help build on some of the strategies that we talked about last week. So in Canva, you can create a Facebook post from a template or you can create it from scratch. So if you, there's a button, there are lots of buttons in there, but there's a main one in the top right corner that says create a design. You'll just click on that. You can select um, a custom dimension if you're looking for that you can select a social media um, category and that'll have everything, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, videos, YouTube, uh, video clips that you can create on there. 
And then of course you can do your flyer, rack card, Facebook post. Once you select um, the type of graphic that you want to create, you'll have the option to start customizing it from really like a left hand panel. So you can choose to customize your photos using, there's a free suite of Canva photos that'll be um, in that photos icon that's kind of in the top left. Or you can upload photos from your own device and those will be in your uploads. Like I said, that's where you can upload your, um, your logo or any photos that you use. And then you really just want to start layering and it's a very easy system to navigate. It's very intuitive. So if you want to place a background on, choose a filter, um, you can layer with elements. So there are lots of like stickers, text, uh, boxes and shapes that you can use to layer onto that background to make, uh, to make an image that feels more professional and, and more designed. And then there's the option to share it. So you'll see there's the share button. That's something that you can use to share with your team members. So if you create a graphic and then maybe you want someone else to approve it or give you a second, um, second opinion on it, you can hit that share button and then put in their email address or their name if you've already invited them as a team member. And they can have the option to just view it if you want them to see it but not edit, or they can edit it. And then you can download and save the design in a number of different file types. So PNG, which I think is probably more high quality in terms of image downloads than the JPEG. And then you can do the PDF uh, standard or the PDF print. So if you're sending something out to print from Canva, you can use the, P the PDF print and it will have um, the crops and bleeds on there. So if you're used to working with printers, they may ask for a file that has the crop marks in the corners. And so that PDF print is um, how to distinguish it from the standard. So the first one that I'm going to go into Canva and show you live is updating a template. So you see the simple template uh, that's on the left that says leave the office ASAP, um, which Happy leave the office early day. I don't know if you guys are ready for that, but once we get, <laughs> once we get back in, I guess, maybe we can start this holiday. And so um, I really just changed the colors. I updated the text on here so that it reflects Legacy's um, standard, brand standard text. And, um, and that's it, really, added the logo. And so it's an easy way to update a template to make it reflect something that could be useful for your organization. The other um, option that I'm going to show is creating a graphic from scratch. So last week we talked about um, using Facebook Live and Stories to help supplement your static post content. And so um, we had mentioned that if you were doing an important announcement, let's say you know your office is opening back up, or you have an event that's going virtual, or you, um, you have some other important announcement that you could do that using Facebook Live rather than doing it just in a static post. But what you wanna do is be promoting that probably a week out is good. So saying, hey, we're gonna go live, our CEO is going to be on talking about why you should attend our virtual event, and, um, and so here is the type of promotional post that you could do. And I'll go through this and design this as well so you could see how to do something like that. So one moment while I switch displays and then um, Miranda, I will ask you to give me a thumbs up again when I, when it looks okay. Perfect. And while you're switching your screens, we did have one question um, regarding sharing documents with your team. Um, mm -hmm. Must you only share with one of the pre-approved people on your team? No. So you can share with anyone uh, that you have an email address for. 
So they don't have to be one of the members that you've invited. You can send it to anyone that, that you have the email address. Okay, so Miranda, can you see this? It should look like a Canva screen. Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to start out by designing um, the first one, which was just updating the template. So I should point out some of the features that I went over in the first few slides. So you'll see here that there's that create the design button. You'll see here that here are some of your folders and then there's all kinds of templates and things here. So if you go into your folder, so I had saved this template, which looks like this. Hopefully this comes up quickly. And so now you can see over in the left-hand panel, you have all of those things that we talked about. The photos, elements here that have all kinds of stickers and shapes, um, text, videos, backgrounds. So we'll go through some of these elements. But you can click on any, all the photos that we've uploaded and used. So to change the colors, and I already have Legacy's brand colors in here, but like this background color, not ours. So I like to use dark green, then this, you can see it's easy as click it here, click here to change the color. Might do that in the light green. I'm going to erase that and say we are back. And then I'm going to change this font. You can see I'm coming up here right now where it has all of your font choices. And I'm going to use, let's say, and there are all kinds of things that you can search. They have a ton of free fonts on here that you can use. So I did this. We are back. Now um, you can see that there's text here. And so I'm going to delete this text and replace it with our logo image up here. But what you might want to do first is ungroup all of these. So you can see that when I clicked on this one thing, these boxes are also highlighted. So I'm going to ungroup them so that I can change each element individually. So we'll delete that one. And then I will add our logo. You can see we have, a, I don't think there's a limit on how many photos you can upload in the free version. We have a ton uploaded in here, or at least I do. There it is. So you can see how easy it is to move, kind of rotate things. And then I would just edit the message like this, you know, starting June 1. I won't go through the whole message, you get the point. So um, you can adjust your font sizes here, let's say you wanted to bring it up. I like, I think Canva sometimes makes the fonts a little small. So I like to bring them up. It makes them nice and easy to read when you post them. Maybe not quite that big. So you could do something like that. I'm going to change this pen color. Bam. That easy. So now you have something that you could brand with your own colors, your own logo, um, and use this content. And this graphic was not something that said anything about office reopening. So sometimes you have to search for the template that you think fits the content that you want to share. And then you can share it, like I said. So you could type in that email address and share it with whatever, whoever. And then here you can um, edit or you can share the link just to view. And then again, that download button. So you can um, download it, you can share it, uh, you can 
posted directly to your Facebook page if you have that connected. And then you can see up here, it says all changes are saved. So it automatically saves as you're going. And then the undo button right here, my best friend. So any questions on that? So we did receive a few questions. Okay. Um, the first one from Ruth in Planting Possibilities, they use Canva a lot for social media as well as business cards. Sometimes they run into sizing issues with Facebook mm. templates, especially banners and event headers. Um, any suggestions on making sure that the sizing, the sizing fits the standards to Facebook? Yeah, well, I um, hopefully in the templates that are showing, let's see if this switches back that when you're using um, the social media category, they have all different kinds for the different uh, mediums that you're using. So if you're not doing Facebook posts, which those are here, you can see Instagram posts, but they have um, different headers for Facebook covers, for Twitter covers, for YouTube thumbnails. So. If you're using the Facebook cover that theoretically is supposed to fit your, the Facebook cover that you have on. So I wouldn't use the Facebook cover um, across all. So let's say you designed one and then you're also trying to apply it maybe to Twitter, then um, there should be, there would be some sizing issues, but I would think that this should fit appropriately. Is it running too small or too big? Too big, it looks like. Too big. I'm sorry. Yeah, it runs too big. A lot of times I'll, I'll size something using the template mm -hmm. for a Facebook cover, for an event cover, and it just, it runs too big, and then you're trying to change things. Um, so that I've run into that problem. Then I might suggest maybe leaving a margin around the side, so that way, um, if it is sizing out too big, then it leaves you a little room to expand it. And I would also mention, Ruth, I've had the same issues, so it's not just you. Um, I've had the same issues with the Facebook event covers. Um, I have not had the same issue with the Facebook traditional banner for your page, but I do, as Erica said, I do usually leave a little bit of an extra border around the graphics um, just so nothing gets lost and cut off into the Facebook event covers. But that does happen. And I know Facebook is always changing the sizing requirements. And I think obviously Canva catches up eventually, but there is always still that little bit of an error. Um, we did have a few other questions. Sure. Um, the the photos that you showed that you uploaded those are your photos that is correct Vernadine those are the photos um, Erica has uploaded into her Canva account and then we had another question related to the photos that you uploaded from Lisa and she would like to know um, can everyone on your team see those photos or just you um, or the person that's uploading them so if you invite by team members, they may be able to see them. But since this is just my account with my own email address, not the Legacy Foundation account, uh, these are only photos that I can see. So if Miranda logs into her account, she's only going to see her photos as well. But if you use the invite team members, that you may be able to access um, photos from other from other people's accounts, but I'm, I'm not sure on that. And then we did receive one question regarding colors um, from <laughs> Sharita. Could you just show how to um, add a new color um, if you were just changing the color of a background? She's asking if we can use um, Pantone colors, but I believe it is sure. just web and the RGB that you can upload. Yes, so if you, want to add a new color, you'll see, you can select, let's say I want to change this blue here. Uh, you'll select the color up here and then new color. And then the only thing that you can add in is that web color. So Sharita, if you do so only- So it doesn't give you the option to add in, like the- Sorry, there's a delay, I think. I <laughs> 
Oh, okay. So that, and that's how you would change it. So if I'm doing that then, because we have, I have two Pantone colors for our primary colors, then I just need to find something that's as close as possible. Is that, because I don't have a web, I don't have web color um, codes or whatever. You, you should be able to find, um, there um, might be even on the Pantone site that you could put that in and it would give you a web code for that color. There should be a web code that matches your Pantone color. Exactly. Okay, I'll look it up. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, yeah, Sharita, if you just Google Pantone to web color code, something will come up that you can put those in. I've done it before. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Erica, that looks like all the questions for now. Okay, great. So we'll move on to the second one. And I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. And we're going to develop that one um, that had the little graphic that was running across. And that actually shows as a, a video when you upload it um, to Facebook. So that'll rank even higher in people's feeds than a static post. So I just go to the Facebook post here, back to create a design, Facebook post, if you click on there, and you'll see that, once this comes up, you're starting with just a blank square. Don't be intimidated by this, very easy to fill in. So I like to start, um, I like to layer filters over images so that you get a little bit of that, um, that visual behind the solid filter. I just think it adds some dimension. So I'm going to use uh, one of the free Canva photos. So you'll see here, there are all of these and they say, if you hover over them, they'll either say free or they'll have a little crown or a little dollar sign on them. Another tidbit for getting around some of the paid content here. So if you pull up something and it shows as, you know, this is a paid graphic or this is, you know, a paid image that you have to, you can just delete that image from the graphic, upload your own, and then it won't be paid anymore. It'll be a free graphic. So that's one way that you can get around some, if you want, if you like the design and you can change the photos out with your own photos, um, then you can eliminate some of those Canva paid photos and that will change the price of the total design from a paid to a free. So I'm going to use this nice soap photo since we all are so conscious of washing our hands now. And then um, so I'm going to add a filter over that and the way that I'm going to do that is in the elements box. And I'm going to add just a block right over it. So this comes up green and really it doesn't kind of matter. It'll cut out the size, how big you make it. But I don't want it to be this light green. So I'm going to change the color here to that dark. And right now you see there's no transparency to it at all. So the way that you change the transparency is by going to this grid that fades out to the right. So um, I like it at about 85% is good. So you can see that it's dark enough where you can overlay text over it and it won't get lost, but you still get some of the image behind it. And then I'm gonna add a frame. So you can see, again, these are in my recently used, but if you were on here for the first time, that frame would be down here in shapes. And if you click on see all, you can see all of these and I just picked this one here. So you can size that out how you like it. And then um, to align something, because you want this frame to be nice and centered, there's this position button. And so this uh, helps you move things forward and backward. So if you wanted to move this behind the filter, you could do that by moving it backward. Um, or you can change the position to center it from left to right and also from top to bottom. So the middle 
is going to place it in the middle from top to bottom, and then the center is going to place it in the center from left to right. Just like that. And then if I go back to all of my recently used, because I'm trying to do this quickly, I'm gonna add a little computer on there because we're going to be asking people to join us by Facebook Live. And I'm gonna add some text. So when you click on the header text, it's not in the text that I want, but that's okay. And I'm going to say, join us live for a special announcement. Oops, helps if you can spell correctly. So, and then you can see sometimes when you um, are moving an image, it'll give you those lines that let you know this is nice and centered. I'm gonna change this, like I said, I like to use the Gaudi because it most closely, it's the free font that most closely aligns with legacy font. And then I'm going to add just some, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Gonna add some body text down here that says, you know, our CEO will be making a special announcement. So I want this nice and bright white so it stands out against that dark background. I'm going to use Roboto because that most closely aligns with our Frutiger font. And then there was that visual that said Tuesday kind of went across. And so that you also will get from the elements and there are, and I think this might be a newer feature, there are all of these cool stickers on here that you can add. This can be a little overwhelming. There are so many things in here that you can look through, but um, I'm gonna use a word sticker. Lots of things on here that maybe don't apply, but um, there are lots of different options on here. So you can search them like this if you're looking for a specific word and I'm looking for Tuesday. And you'll see lots of things related to Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras, all the things. So here's the Tuesday that I want, and you can see that that's also a free option. It centers right there on the page. And so now you have a nice, um, engaging, kind of active element that you can add, and that took you know maybe 10 minutes or so to design. So you can see it'll play for six seconds. You can share this again and then you can download it. So when you download it, it'll download as a video. You can also download it as a PNG or a JPEG file and it will be static then. It will just say Tuesday. It won't have the action that um, spells it across. So I'll pause here for any questions on designing an element from scratch. Ruth is asking the question, if you are downloading a video, how does it download? Is it an MP4 file? It downloads as an MP4. Yep. That's exactly it. And then you can change, oh, so you can also change the title of these events up here. So uh, if you're, once you start doing lots of posts and you want to be able to easily find them, um, you can, or maybe you want to update this at a later date and you don't want it to say Tuesday now, you want it to say Wednesday, then you can say Facebook post for Tuesday. So you can change that and right there you can see all changes are saved. It automatically updates right here. And then we did have one other question. Are GIFs not movable files anymore? GIFs are in here. So um, in your download options, I should drop this box down. So you have your PNG, there's the MP4 video, and then right below it, you'll see there's the GIF short animated clip.
I can click through some of these. So like I said, um, here you'll see all of the free and paid, some of them paid Canva photos that you can use. You can search these by these categories here. So you'll see they have food, beach, computer, all kinds of um, different categories that make it easy to find the photo that you're looking for. There are a ton in here. Again, your elements, um, you can just click and it'll kind of take you back. There are photo grids that you can make. So if you've ever seen maybe those banners that have lots of different photos on them and they've um, assembled them into a collage, this is where you can do that and they have lots of different versions. Your text, there are text combinations that you can use. So if you um, were doing a square announcement like this and you wanted to just there was a font combination in here that you really liked and you wanted to use it. You can just click on that. It will carry that over onto your page. And then there are some more animated elements like music, videos that you can add, the different backgrounds. So you can see that I have some of the legacy colors up here, but then there are also backgrounds like brick walls and lights and other kind of artsy things that you can add. Your uploads, so if you're adding new images, you'll just do this, upload an image or video like you would for lots of things. It'll take it right from your device. Your folders. And then here, if you um, wanna get into integra integrating this with some of your other uh, marketing tools, then here's where you can do that. If you wanted to integrate it with Facebook or MailChimp, um, then here are all those apps and integrations. So I will go back to the home. And I'm going to show you, there are um, lots of videos. So once uh, this webinar is over and you log in and you want to watch some videos on how to do some of this, there are lots of videos and short tutorials in here that make it easy as well. And then you can see all of the templates here that you can access social media. There are, we design invitations in this. Actually, this uh, PowerPoint presentation that I'm using today, I pulled that template from Canva. Um, so you can see in your business presentations, flyers, brochures, newsletters. Um, there are so many different templates for you to use in here. So now I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. And while you're doing that, Erica, Ruth did make a comment um, that she has used the mobile Canva app a few times, and that's mm -hmm. another option um, to utilize on a tablet. Oh, great. I've not ever used that. I just thought because this, you know, I'm, I'm not good with small screens, so I just rolled that out. <laughs> but if it, you say it's easy to use, I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, so are you seeing the large one or are you seeing the smaller ones, the slides? I am seeing the larger one. Okay, great. So because there are so many things that you can do in Canva, you don't want your, um, your messaging and your graphics to start to look all over the place. So one thing that I, um, that I think is important is that you be consistent in your design. So if you have your brand colors and you have your fonts, use those consistently because that will allow you to experiment with all of the different, um, the, all the different file types, all the different um, templates that are in there while maintaining a cohesive look so that when you're putting things out, it looks like it's coming from your organization and from um, your brand. So that's it. Like I said, it's not, this isn't a sales pitch for Canva. So I'd be interested in hearing if there are other um, design tools that you all are using to get your graphics out. But I found out about this at a conference um, maybe a couple of years ago now, and it's just been such a lifesaver. So I'm hoping that it will be effective and efficient for you all to use um, when you're putting things together. I know Miranda uses this a lot because she manages our social media accounts 
and um, and we have for social media we have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. We have them all. <laughs> we have them all, which is a lot, and it's uh, that's one place where you can kind of design for all of those platforms in one place. So it, it also helps to assemble that information in one place so that you don't have a bunch of files everywhere. They're on the cloud. It saves you storage space. Um, you can access them at any time. Uh, so our email addresses are there. You can see mine and Miranda's. You can feel free to reach out to us with any questions that you might have um, or as you're going through and you're designing things, if you're like, man, I just can't remember how to do this, um, you know, feel free to, to email us. But I will, um, let me see, Miranda, if you wanna go ahead and um, allow people to unmute themselves, then feel free to unmute and ask any, any questions that you have. Can I ask one question, Erica? Sure, go ahead, Sharita. Can you back up one uh, page on your presentation? I just want to capture what you had on there about, about your brand and stuff. That one. Yes, that's the one I want to see. Hold on. Yeah, because then you can, and I'm not saying don't ever use anything that's outside of your brand font. Um, we're definitely guilty of doing this. Sometimes you're trying to, so I should say Legacy's brand colors and our font are very serious, right? We like want people, you know, to trust us with their money and, you know, that we're making wise investments. So our brand is, um, it's a little muted. But when we're trying to reach younger people and we want like a bright color or a bright um, or a font that's a little more fun, we incorporate those still. Um, but if you're still incorporating like your brand colors, like I said, your logo um, and your other fonts pretty consistently, then you can step outside every once in a while and do something that um, maybe is different than what's in your standards manual. I just wanted to make sure I had that because we have three offices in three different locations and this is something that I've really tried to reinforce to them that is so important because we still are just health vision. So thank you. That was all I needed. Oh yeah. I mean, we have a, a version of a logo from um, maybe like six years ago that sometimes people still use, <laughs> that sometimes people still use. And we're in a small office, you know, there are only eight of us. So, um, or I guess maybe mid-size, I guess it's all relative. Um, but yeah, so even with that, and we're all in the same place, it's sometimes hard to communicate like, hey, just so you know, you know, this is the tagline that you should be using in your logo, not the other one. We did have a few more questions in the chat box. Um, was there a cost um, when you got the account for yourself? No. So you just create your login information. There is no cost. It doesn't ask for a credit card up front or anything that you have to put in. So for the free, uh, for the free account, there is no, no pricing attached to that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And then Ruth made a comment that she started playing around with Adobe Spark and they're currently offering a two month free trial. Um, she's not sure if they do have a nonprofit option, but um, it is something that people can take a look at. Oh, Ruth, I'm curious about Adobe Spark. So are you using that for a lot of the similar things that you're using Canva for, or does it do different um, things? Let's see, can we unmute? There we go. Um, I really just started using it within the past, oh, maybe the past week. Um, it has a lot of um, similar capabilities. It seems like it's more powerful if you're trying to do a little bit more with adding video. I've not really played around with the video um, in Canva. Um, I have recently started playing around with that a little bit more as well, but it's another, it, it's similar. Um, it seems like it might be a little bit more powerful, but it might be cost prohibitive just because Adobe usually is. Yes, Adobe can get pretty expensive. Um, I think I used them once to download like 10 free images and it was 
at least a hundred dollars <laughs> for those. But but it does have so much. I mean, the Adobe Suite has a lot more functionality. And if they're offering a two month trial, I would take advantage of it just to see. And maybe you can create things within that two months and then save them really quickly before they start charging you. Right, and it is the two month um, option is the full package. It's not just the, um, the, the trial package. That's good. We I'll did send have that out. We did have another question. Um, does the nonprofit version of Canva provide more options than the straight free version you were showing? It does. So mm -hmm. the nonprofit version of Canva will give you all the same access as the Canva Pro. So mm. you'll get to um, add more folders because like I said, I think you only get two folders with the free version. You'll be able to add in your, um, your brand logo. So it will pull that in automatically. Your brand colors, you'll be able to add more of those. And then you do get access to more of like the design elements like photos and um, graphic you know, stickers and shapes, all of those things. So um, it does give you more access. And that was all the questions we have in the chat. Oh, good. So um, I'll encourage you all to sign up for the third webinar. So that will be next Wednesday. We'll be talking about designing short video. Um, I will be sending out the recordings. If you were on the first webinar, I have not sent out the recording from that one yet, but I um, am planning to post all of the recordings so that you can go back and reference um, any of the slides that you'll need. There, I did see one raised hand. Hi, Erica, this is Lawanda, can you hear me? Hi, Lawanda, I can hear you. Okay, I did have a question. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I understood all that I was looking at, because um, it looks like you were showing us like a steel version of what you did for the business. Um, we are non for profit, but we are like a ministry. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to create like for right now, I've been just posting like the services, the video services on we've been doing that Facebook Live and then I I upload them to YouTube. Okay. So if I wanted to create something that would tell about the ministry like before the live comes up, is Canva a good um, thing to do that in? Yeah, so they do have the YouTube. So I don't, um, just let me know if I'm not answering the right question. They have a YouTube thumbnail that you can use as a cover photo for your video. So if you were posting things to YouTube and you wanted to have like a cover image on there, you can create that. Or um, another option, if you wanted to promote your services, directing people from your Facebook page or your Instagram page over to YouTube to watch one of the past services that you've already uh, posted, then you could use Canva to design a post for that. Or pre, before, if you're saying, hey, we're gonna go live you know, tomorrow at this time, um, then you could design something similar to what I showed you um, on one of the slides. So it doesn't do videos at all. It's just like, it's not, ver I'm trying to say, it's not videos at all. It's just all steel Canva is. I gotcha. Yes. So you can upload videos in there. So let me, I'm going to um, stop sharing here and actually go back into the Canva screen. So let me. I don't know if I was explaining it right. It's kind of like almost like a pre video before you show the uploaded video. So like maybe I could create a video telling about what our ministry is about, you know, you know what we do before the pastor actually comes up and does the live video. I now I get what you're saying. Um, so I believe that you could upload your own videos and then you could add some graphic elements over it and then post that before, or maybe attach it, download it and attach it to your um, other recordings. So here is where, if you had a video here, you would upload it in this section. So you can upload a video or image that you've recorded. You can't record on here. 
But okay. if you um, add a video that you've already recorded on your phone or on the camera that you use for your church services, mm -hmm. and then you can add design elements over it. Okay, and then whatever you do in Canva, you can just automatically send it to whatever platform. I can automatically send it to Facebook, automatically send it to YouTube. YouTube you, through here. you can, but I would recommend downloading it to your device always, okay. only because that way you have it saved on your computer or on um, wherever you use to save your files. If it's in like a, a Google Drive or um, other you know, file storage place, then um, I, I would just recommend always downloading it so you have a copy of it for later. If you share it directly to, um, so you can see here there's a publish, if you share directly to Facebook, then um, you do still have, I guess, it designed here in Canva. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't see any anything else. I don't see any other questions. Um, I would just like to make one comment. If you, this is your first time utilizing Canva, take 10, 15 minutes just to look at it. You know, as Erica said, there's so many different features um, and comparing it to other design options, it is super easy to utilize. Um, so don't get overwhelmed with it, um, but it, it is a great tool that you can learn very fast how to use it. Canva also has a great help section, um, as Erica showed all of the videos that you can watch. Utilize them if you, if you do have any questions along the way, as well as reach out to us. I know I use Canva on a daily basis. I also use it in my personal um, life. I design my wedding invitations with Canva. So it definitely is something that you can you can utilize um, outside of work if, if you have the need to, but it is a great program. Yeah, I second that. It's really versatile, but it, it can be overwhelming. So just take some time to experiment and um, kind of just look through the templates, see what you like. You don't want to try to go in there when you're in a rush to design something and then be like, oh, I can't find this template that I'm looking for. Um, you know, because then you start to get flustered like anyone does when you're when you're being rushed and then you're overwhelmed with all of this information. So I think it's if you like doing this kind of stuff, it's a fun program to work in. Hey, Eric, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, Bernadine, you can go. This is Janae. I'll wait. So you're done. Oh, okay. So Bernadine, if you want to go first and then Janae. Oh, uh, the notes from last week, are they reserved for the people who were able to participate? I had a, a kind of conflict last week. No, so I will, um, I'm finding the best place to put that, which might just be in a Google Drive, and then we can add them to our website, but I'll do them so that you can act, anyone can access them. Okay, great, thanks. You're welcome. Um, my question is about the video. Are you saying that basically we can create a graphic and then embed a video in it kind of like that Tuesday? GIF was? Yes, yeah, so you okay. can upload, uh, sorry, in your uploads here. So you can just upload the video here. And then when you're in your template, so let's say you already have your, your video uploaded there. When you're looking to create a design, there is a video category. So then you can add elements over that video that you've recorded. So what you're saying is you can put it over. I was thinking that like, for example, you made that square. I could put a video inside of it so that it, I've created like a frame for the video. Is that You may that be you able to do that. Okay. I've actually, I've never, I've never tried that before, but um, you might be able to just go ahead and create the square and then insert that media clip into there. It's worth giving a shot. All right, so uh, we're two minutes out and it doesn't look like there's any more questions. So I just want to say again, thank you all for joining. I hope that you find these helpful. I know that if you're like, 
like I said, if you're an advanced marketing professional, that this might seem a little rudimentary, but um, you know, we're just looking right now, we all have kind of a lot going on, um, looking for ways that can be really efficient and fast and simple for anyone in your organization to use to help you guys just keep communicating with our supporters online. So um, I'll have these posted soon. Hey, and, Erica. Yeah. Just sorry, one more question. No, go um, ahead. My, my mom just asked this. How can okay. you, um, wh where do you go on the website? Because she was saying she couldn't find this. Where do you go on the website to access the, the nonprofit? Oh, to, okay. To send them your stuff so that you can get that version of it. So if you go to canva.com, it's actually in pricing. So if you drop down pricing here, you'll, there is, oh, I'm, I don't think I'm not my able to see that. At all. <laughs> well, okay. So let me go ahead and um, share my screen quickly so you can see where this is. Can you see this now? Okay. So when you're on the screen, there is this pricing tab. So you'll see that there's all of these, the free version that I just showed you today and then the Canva Pro for nonprofits. So when you go into that, that there is an application here, so you can apply. It's, I think it's pretty short. So you can check all of the eligibility requirements, and then it asks you questions about what your organization does, how you help people, what you would like the world to know about you, that kind of thing. So, um, and that's it. So you submit right from here. It's kind of a quick application on there. So go to canva.com and then it's in the pricing tab. Okay. I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you so much again. Hopefully I'll see you next week. And thank you for the offering this. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for joining.